So, good morning and uh, welcome to Plumbus. Very exciting environment here, and uh, I'm very thankful to Plumbus for selecting this talk and uh, putting me first speaker of the day. So it is making me a bit nervous. <coughs> so let me start on the topic. So I'll get into more details. So it will clearly present what exactly I'm what this topic is about and uh, what exactly I want to get uh, conveyed. So before this, like I, like when I got here, so I see many known faces around. So I know many people, but they don't know me. So just to introduce myself, I started uh, at TI uh, in 2002 and started working on Linux device drivers way back. And then a lot of my contributions you might see only in 2.6. So very way back. And then I realized like we need a lot of open source hardware and open community platforms for really open source community to work on. And that's when I collaborated with Jason Kreidner. So at TI and we started this BeagleBoard.org initiative. So I was one of the co-founder member for BeagleBoard.org. And then I, I wanted to do more of open source work. And then I joined Linaro. I started working on 64-bit Android for ARM V8 and then Greg is here. We started working on Project Ara under his leadership. And then we started working on um, Android for ARM servers, um, getting Android working on Docker containers. Um, uh, I saw Lee Jones here. He was our lead then. And then at last, like I was working on uh, yoctification of uh, all the ARM UEFI and ARM kernel. So making a bunch of releases for ARM in one STP there. And then now back, I'm back in TI, so doing a lot of open source stuff again. But uh, now I get to meet a lot of automotive customers there and automotive OEMs, and they bring to me a lot of uh, uh, lot of requirements on automotive use cases. And first thing I try to propose them is the Linux solution, and I get uh, hit back on when I start proposing general Linux open source solutions for any of their problems that they are bringing to me. So. Three things that uh, they basically haunt me uh, when I'm proposing any open source or public or even uh, Linux based or Linux way of doing things in automotive industry. First thing, the solution that I'm proposing, is it safety qualified? Does it comply to safety certification? Now, what is it? How are we supposed to do a software which is there in public, get it to safety qualification? That has always been a big difficult challenge on me to ex to explain on how we can get um, no fault or fault tolerant um, software and how we build that software from scratch. And that's one key aspect where I struggle to explain and uh, how we can make uh, basic things, fundamental things which are there in Linux for so long and how we make the automotive industry use the, those fundamental concepts and software and public software that is available and which is not safety qualified and I get hit back on that. The second major challenge that uh, hits us is on the performance of early KPIs. We call KPIs in auto world. So uh, basically you turn on your engine and your camera. If you are on a reverse gear, your camera should start streaming within 750 milliseconds. And you got to give a can response within 50 to 100 milliseconds. You have to get all your sensors which are there in ADAS, which are connected over Ethernet, and then you have to get them all connected to the server and it should start running analytics and giving you the real-time data and real-time uh, response to those sensors. And above all, like HMI application, basically if you are on IBI, you want to, as soon as you turn on your car or even before your car is on, like you just want to have splash and completely 3D graphics accelerated needles and things showing up. So we like a decade ago when I was working, like my first initial issue of getting early splash was like I wanted to show an Android logo on my device as soon as my mobile is turned on, right? Like that, that's what I know and I know how to get the splash working. But here the requirement is basically when you are seeing, you are bringing that entire system up, starting from uh, getting even a simple CAN response to UART based device to sensors, to display, to camera, to audio, almost everything in the system should come up within few seconds. Like the, the target that is set is within a second. Within a second, getting all these devices up is becoming uh, way too tedious when we try to, unless we tweak in Linux a lot. And that's something that challenges me. 
and then the most important aspect also is like i have seen i was not observing auto industry to be honest and when i start looking at the autom automotive industry for last two years now i am seeing that the device the way they have configured the system the way the devices are and the way the software stack is it's not power optimized but we see today entire auto industry is behind ev right like in every segment of auto industry today starting from two wheelers to your high high end trucks like they are all going on ev and every single milliwatt is going to add to the battery life and power management has to be thought through and well thought through and when it comes to linux again we have very good power management solutions but then when it gets to um, gets to automotive we are struggling to take those things because they need some more additional tweaks and hooks which are not available to user space and that's where it's getting stuck but it's not like we have no solutions to that the industry already has been evolved in last decade and we are seeing a lot of penetration into every single uh, domain and the way they have solved all of these issues is by going into heterogeneous processing like for every single thing if they can't solve in linux put an mcu put an r5 put a put a extra core which can take control of the system like you want to start a camera early put an mcu connect it to camera and that takes care of your camera solution you want ethernet and you want it to be connected to sensors and it should be fast then just hook on an mcu and connect the network and then get all the sensors control data to in, through uh, mcu so basically every single problem has been converted into an mcu problem and a microcontroller and the firmware that is running there is safety qualified and compliant and therefore they meet all their asil a b c d requirements that are imposed by the safety certification bodies so these things are really uh, affecting us in taking linux deep into uh, solving all automotive use cases so every single problem as i said every single use case that are imposed or that is being asked by the auto industry we have solution in linux we have solution in open source but when it gets to deployment some of these challenges are really hurting us in taking it broader so the whole reason for me uh, to get here is like i just wanted to brainstorm these like as i am seeing these issues in uh, when i am working with my oems and my customers definitely there should be similar issues with other oems other semiconductor partners and so on so what i want to do here is just to have a brainstorming session here and i will be here for next 3 days i want to see if there are similar issues that are Uh, faced by others and how they have solved if we can collaborate and get these things in a linux way and solve these things in public and open source uh, solutions and get get our linux kernel and bootloaders and things hardened to meet all of these automotive requirements if we can do that that that's the end of uh, like that's my goal from this uh, meeting here and also like how i can um evangelize this in next 2 3 days and get more and more people interested in taking uh, the open source way to solve all these automotive problems so i uh, like i have few use cases and studies which i want to present here so i want to just showcase what the problem statement was like what was the general ask and how the current solution and implementation looks like and then what should be our long term solution if we want to take this in the way that linux community would uh, maintain or manage it so basically the entire auto industry is in the hands of autos today and then the proprietary operating systems and things so how do we turn it around and make linux drive some of these concepts and take control of these uh, use cases and solve these use cases uh, for this industry so first major thing or first issue that comes into play here is about the bootloaders so uh like we know our traditional way like we have spl atf u boot linux and linux star basically gets mounting file system and starts hypervisor so this is our traditional way right? we all are used to this but as soon as we get into the auto world the first thing that gets cut down is the bootloader like boot like auto world says this spl and bootloader we don't know where it is coming from the the sources are not public we don't know the secure implications the code quality is not safety compliant and there is no fault tolerance uh, added into the bootloader so so they don't trust if we bring in spl and u boot into 
the uh, boot flow and that's where first thing that gets um, hindered uh, first thing is like to get uh, booting linux kernel within uh, a second so which can be achieved i don't see that is a problem here but then all the safety certifications the misrasi compliance of the code the ldra tool execution and these things are becoming too complicated when we take spl as the standard bootloader offering for automotive industry so what should be the open source way of doing things then like should we uh, take spl out of the boot flow and suggest a new methodology to handle automotive industry in terms of bootloaders like from ti especially like we have an sbl bootloader which we have put in public it's available like i have shared the link here which is there on github but i am not personally uh, I, i would say the the code quality the semantics and things are not the way the linux community like we all are used to but then this is still public source that we have put out and we are committed to make this safety compliant like all the misra checks the ldra checks and things that are, that are that makes this code as a safety compliant we can make those things happen so i can commit to that part of it but then we need a community collaboration model here which we can take it and get these uh, this get this component more broadly deployed and used and consumed the the biggest challenge here is like you solve bunch of problems in spl and you boot today like you get emmc working at hs 400 speeds all your boot modes are supported dfu is supported every single thing is already cracked and maintained and well thought through in spl and bootloader but that but same thing is not getting uh, into custom bootloaders and they spend a lot of r and d cycles to even uh, mix and match things so but i mean to say there is a complete duplicate effort in the industry which is happening on bootloaders which can be avoided if we can collaboratively work and get this public bootloader and in some form i am not so intent towards taking the bootloader that ti has published but if there is any other bootloader today which has safety compliance i definitely want to hook on to it instead of doing any custom solution and that solution has to be open source and industry accepted so this was uh, one problem area which i wanted to touch base the second key area is basically as i was saying like when 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 i go near my car the car automatically turns on and then all the subsystems in the device should come up with from the displays to cameras to sensors and network everything should come up right the way today as i said uh, it is uh, it is done in the industry today is by putting all these device drivers and uh, device drivers and firmwares in an mcu and the cost of this solution is way too heavy for a two wheeler cluster or a two wheeler domain to handle like okay bmws and others can handle maybe because of the cost of the things but when you want to take give similar experience in a two wheeler which is running in india taiwan asian countries like it, the solution becomes too expensive now if you want to give a very cut down solution then you need to bring the cost down the bomb material cost down but if you have to do that then all of these things should fit in the linux environment and in order to fit into that linux environment you cannot have like if you have four mcus in your soc handling each of these uh, peripherals and cores so that's not acceptable then what is the solution that linux community has in order to handle all of these peripherals so the first thing that uh, uh, that we are doing in our accessories today is like as soon as you power on or turn on this soc the mcus are booting parallel to the a core which is your a72 or a720 or a53 core and by the time linux is booted to prompt these mcus have configured these uh, sensors now for example we have one sensor which has around 4k registers to be programmed over i square c before linux comes up now if you have to do this after linux driver is up over i square c it's going to take a long time now in order to avoid that the solution we have is in today is through mcus and they doing all the i2c and uh, transfers and getting the device ready and then linux comes up and takes the control but can we do this as part of bootloader like can can we have a multi threaded bootloader which runs on a72 or a53 core itself and bootloader is basically configuring all these peripherals one by one in a multi threaded environment and then linux is also coming up on a core a core and then later linux takes control of all the other cores which are there in the system 
So ca can we come up with a simple solution which can make you boot the owner and master of configuring all these uh, peripherals early in this boot flow instead of relying on uh, MCUs to do the job for us. So these were some of the thoughts that we have in mind. There is a bootloader for automotive return in Rust. Okay. It is not certified, but there is a safety certification. That's too good to know. Thanks a lot for sharing this. So, uh, yeah, this is what I want to do here. This is what I want to get away with. If there are more such things, I just want everybody to be following the open source way instead of inventing, reinventing, and doing the proprietary way of things. So, as I said, like we need a long term solution for early DMA, early I square C. Sorry, go ahead. Should we wait and ask but questions? It yeah, it's okay. Uh, my session is more. It should be working. Well, my, my question was uh, like a lot of times embedded devices, you just never turn them off. Um, so, could you speak on the need to uh, boot? Couldn't you just they keep running forever? Sorry, sorry. I didn't. So, my, my, sorry, my question is uh, what is the, could you speak on the need to boot uh, Linux every time you start the car, for example? Couldn't just be, be running all the time? Like in a dormant state or something like that? It can be, uh, it can be in that state if you have like th that's what is happening in some of the cars today, where the where even if you go nearby the car, your car basically starts booting the operating system and it's ready for you to even before you plug in your key or turn on Linux has already booted into the system. But same experience if you want to take into a two way uh, two wheeler cluster, like how do you do that there, right? The the experience has to be uh, similar across uh, a high end. EV car to a uh, small two wheeler which is running on EV. So the same experience has to be adopted, right? So uh, as I'm saying, uh, industry has already solved these issues. They have solutions for all that what I'm saying, but these solutions that they have are all completely proprietary, tweaked and taken Linux for granted kind of things. So how do we converge back? And is there a mechanism to converge and start using um, some things, some solutions which are readily available in the market? So even again, like I was, as I was saying about DMA, right? Like uh, there, there are bunch of registers that you want to configure, and you can use DMA to configure. But if you wait for Linux to boot and then initiate the DMA, can you start DMA way early in bootloader phase, like at the SPL phase itself, and do all okay, let the configurations happen in the background, and you boot Linux in the front end? So can, can we come up with uh, these kind of solutions? We are thinking about these things, but there is no immediate answer to it. But if somebody has already started working on similar concepts, then we would definitely be interested to collaborate in those areas. And one of the pretty, uh, very important topic, uh, as I was saying, is power management, right? Like, as I said, uh, in the last decade, uh, the, the complete automobile was always thinking like they have gallons of fuel and always the power was never a requirement for them because it was already always connected to power and there was no battery concepts there. But today, as I was saying, like everything is on EV, like almost all devices are, uh, almost all automotive segments are getting into EV and every simple milliwatt is an important thing. And we have to save the power in the system today. So when uh, when you look around in the Linux uh, solutions, right, like uh, the, the SOC architecture is, like you have ARM multi-core system and then you have a bunch of accelerators. Like you have uh, one device doing camera analytics, uh, one core doing camera analytics, one core doing graphics GPU analytics, and you have another core doing all the safety uh, applications and something managing the complete display subsystem. So you have multi -core, multiple cores in the system, which are like simple MCUs. Now, how do we, there is no mechanism in Linux today to, or there is no definition in Linux today, which, which says this is what a remote core should do when I hit suspend or when I go into deep sleep or when I go into, like, first of all, there are so many modes for a core itself. It is no more like simple CPU idle suspend resume or deep sleep kind of thing. There are multiple modes that these SOCs are offering. Which we need to, uh, which we, which we want the user space application to handle. Plus, 
how we do like we have remote proc driver today so remote proc driver on a suspend sends notification to all the cores in the system and it's left on the mercy of those remote cores on what exactly they would be doing like what these firmwares will be doing but as from the linux uh, subsystem we are not setting some rules saying you are supposed to do these these things like if i put you in ddr self refresh you are supposed to do these set of things and if i go in idle like what should be your uh, uh, what should be the rule of engagement for power management in these remote cores so those definitions are completely missing or lacking and every uh, simple organization to auto oems they are doing things on their own and when uh, when somebody publishes these power numbers like when somebody says this is my dry stone number right like we are comparing apples to apples like one soc is being compared with another soc and you are measuring same dry stone lm bench all these things right they are standard tools but when it comes to power and when somebody says this is my runtime power this is my idle power this is my uh, deep sleep or uh, things like active power these numbers don't match because these numbers are getting cooked and it is coming up after making some uh, manual corrections to it so therefore we need a standard tool and standard mechanism and standard metrics so that industry uh, works on those uh, uh, areas to optimize power so power definitely is a very important uh, concept here which we need to start working the other area is like uh, in mo mobile segment like we have frequency scaling where we do scaling of uh, the voltage and scaling of uh, frequencies and we we reduce the power consumption right similarly when you are working with remote cores like where you have say, 10 mcus in your system and each mcu behaving differently for different uh, uh, power mode we need to see like how we can scale the frequency of these mcus independently so lot of these things will also bind to the way soc is designed to handle power but similarly we also need linux standards to define how remote core would work with the main processor which is running linux and these standards should be published with the tools benchmarking tools and that will really help us in um, doing better on power management with automotive uh, things the final thing is uh, ethernet uh, connectivity notifications again uh, this is a very important area because all the sensors that are connected in a car or in any automobile is over network uh, port and network cabling and there are a lot of hacks I, i just gave an one example here like we want to get a file link up as soon as the device is up device is powered and simple hack that i find in the code that uh, we had is like we moved mac open from system network d demon to a cpsw probe like we have probe function so we move mac open in probe function so it initializes all the switch and the 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 switch is, the file link is up as soon as the probe is done that gives very clearly like 2.5 to 3 seconds of uh, uh, savings but that is completely wrong right we cannot follow this methodology for everything uh, else in linux subsystem so what should we do for these kind of te tweaks which uh, automotive industry is carrying so we need to find a way to discuss these uh, solutions in public and then also have some mechanisms to build these kind of uh, uh, areas in linux subsystem so this is one thing along with not just linux right like the can interface the way we handle ethernet and the way we handle usb most of the things are tweaked today uh, to meet to these automotive standards and automotive use cases so this is basically like uh, all the code base that we have i have the links which i shared in each slide so as i'm saying again so the the solutions are all there we have solved most of these problems in non linux way now how do i get these solutions into a public open source and linux way of doing things so that's what uh, i want to achieve now what should we do with these like should we discuss in the elisa form or should we continue to discuss in linux kernel uh, mailing list and keep uh, discussing on how we want to improvise these things in linux or and the other important aspect like even android android automotive os like all of these issues and use cases and problems that i described for a linux subsystem applies to android as well Uh, we also are working consistently on android so i see similar issues there and 
lot of tweaks and hacks happening on Android subsystem as well. So uh, again, right, like when I look at Elisa and Android Automotive OS project, so they are solving the issues which are above uh, Linux kernel, like the way uh, dealing with the hypervisors and uh, how do we solve the IVI kind of issues and things. But what I am talking here is all the fundamental things, like from boot of the device till the way, uh, till the boot gets handed off to Linux. So there a lot of tweaks and a uh, lot of hacks are present, which we need to standardize it. So that's the overall intention. Again, as I was saying, like how do we get into safety of uh, the safety certification for all the open source uh, software that we have in place? So again, if somebody wants to collaborate and if there is a collaborative way of doing these things, so please uh, uh, reach out to me. And uh, also like I'm here for next two days. We, we should get these things sorted. That's the overall intention uh, of this uh, slide set. So I'm open for questions and thanks to all our uh, open source solution partners like Bailey Bray, Console Co, Beagle Board, and uh, especially Linux Foundation and Linaro for us helping in these uh, solutions when we are coming up with. I'm open for questions, though I may not go more detailed, but definitely I'll be interested to know. So uh, as you were mentioning, the Elisa project, first of all, I guess the Elisa project is very open to discuss it with you. Uh, within the project, the main focus is currently on the Linux kernel side, so not on upper layers. Uh, so for this part, definitely it's interesting to see all the lower layers, which are in there up to the kernel part. But I guess a lot of parts which you put in also for power management and so on, they are discussions. And I directly, when you're mentioning power management and idle cores or reducing dynamic working frequency scaling, uh, I reminded me to the first slide you shown where you say, okay, safety. And I would say there's a lot of things to discuss what happened and could go wrong when you, by mistake, put a wrong frequency on something. Is your workload there in time? Uh, nevertheless, I would say from what you show at the architecture, it would be brilliant to do everything in a Linux domain, but there may be also requirements that you will anyway have still uh, microcontroller next to it, right? Because the microcontrollers are typically certified to much higher safety integrity level than the microprocessors. And for this, you end up in the system. So we discussed it for a long time to say, how much can you get into Linux world? But maybe you also would like to get, uh, say, for time being, it doesn't cost any hurdle. And it's more than if you're running on this microcontroller alters our world, consider also an option to say, I use an open source RTOS here rather than in proprietary RTOS or something and look for a certification part there. So um, I think mean, there's a lot of room for discussion on this. Yeah. We can also take in the next day. So I'm very happy to yeah, I'll take have this forward. A discussion. Again, uh, I'm not so uh, worried on certification. So uh, even like when I come from Linux world, so when I when I was first introduced to the safety and safety certification, so even I was worried, like what does it mean? And but really, to get any uh, any project safety certified, it's really not that big deal. So there are some bunch of tools, bunch of mechanisms that uh, known good standards that you need to follow. Once you follow, then the software can be made uh, safety qualified. Now. Uh, as I said, like we are committed to work in open source and also solve safety. So definitely a lot of uh, collaboration can be done in those areas if we have some running projects there. Yeah, I was just wondering about how we, a lot of the traceability and documentation requirements for, for Azel and stuff sort of are at odds with the Linux development model. Like how do, how do you, you know, have that end-to-end -end traceability and documentation from design down to implementation when the when the design process is a mailing list discussion um. so a uh, few areas where we manage to get that uh, done like for example there is a constraint where you need to show uh, like uh, there is a very clear baseline quality procedure that uh, safety certification team introduces us on or imposes on it right like you have to have design then you have to show test plan then you have to show test coverage then you have to show um, uh, like where, where did you review your reviews and things so for review, it is easy, like you go take a bunch of patchworks and club everything and show that this was review. Test plan, like uh, we have a lot of uh, LKFT, we have so many tests that even Dinaro deploys a lot of tests in Lava today. They, even every organization, we have our own test infra, like we publish test results publicly, where we are showing uh, here is our test case plan and test case metrics, and 
here are our test results so that is continue uh, that is made public so definitely there are a lot of initiatives in open source world today where we can deploy boards in public form and start getting the test results and publish those results for certification so i don't see a big challenge for us in maintaining the test results in public domain and it is possible we are doing it today in ti like if you go to our cicd portals we are publishing our test results live on daily basis and that test plan is safety qualified we can uh, publish even the test plan that we have for safety certification uh so in the elisa project there's a couple of different groups that are probably going to be relevant and interested in participating in this discussion one of which is obviously there's a spot for us to um, have more discussions on automotive side. And so obviously some of these things are going to be very relevant to that site. But there's also the Linux features group that's trying to figure out how to deal with all the parameters and configs and everything else in Linux to set up configurations for certain scenarios and do it most efficiently. So Linux features group and then Elisa project is what the automotive one. It, yeah, they're both there's, there's a bunch of working groups underneath Elisa. One of which is the automotive working group, obviously. But then there's also the Linux features group that's looking at how do you start to configure Linux and put um, the right parameters in place to assess for certain properties. Uh, and then there's also a third group that's relevant here, which is the systems group. And so Philip will be talking a little bit more about that later in the week on how um, we're trying to put a full system together, which is some of the things that you're talking about here too as well. So I, I'd say come more talk to with us and Lisa. We've got, we've been trying to tackle some of these same problems a lot and your help would be very welcome. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, okay. So uh, if I got you right, you just said that with the certified test plan, you don't see a huge problem with getting a certification. But uh, what kind of certi uh, what level of certification are we are we talking? It's probably not still four, right? It's, is it still one? Is it still two? Or yeah, yeah. what are we talking? Yeah, very good question. Like, and, like there are a bunch of certifications. Like if you have to be uh, a very time critical and very sensitive device, there is like a SIL D kind of class of uh, certification. There is a SIL A, a SIL B. Not every automotive component or like the subsystem device qualifies to be an SLD, right? Unless you are an airbag or something you are monitoring or operating, you have to be in that high quality certification, which can definitely be an Autos world and can be managed by real uh, R5 cores, which are SLD to begin with itself, right? Those segments are okay, but there are a bunch of other segments which don't need to be in SLD uh, certification. Like if you're, uh, you are an IVI or you are a camera subsystem or you are a two-wheeler automotive cluster or you are simply a speedometer or things like this, right? So in automotive, tons of electronics, even to turn on your lights, even to project something, even your rear view camera, rear view mirror, so many devices are there which don't qualify to be uh, a real hardcore safety SLD kind of uh, thing. So for those segments, uh, whatever safety certification that we are suggesting should be good enough. But few time critical and uh, safety things we should still deal with that is affected. Uh, I want to touch base on what you said about requirements and design and so on. I guess testing is one thing, and putting this, even if putting it into public, is quite easy. But if you put a lot of requirements on components and so on, uh, you need to also maintain those requirements, and I guess this would be a very high take because a lot of things you may make use of in Linux or related components are also used in many other use cases, and the demands from automotive are very high. So I assume that it's important to make an argumentational base because typically the safety standards just say you need to do you need to do it exactly in this way. They say this is a practice and show me an equivalent class of it. So I believe it's also a lot of thing to just improve the documentation. For example, see that the man pages map the implementation because it's not always followed one on one, uh, and who have much more documented on this so that most likely a person who creates a system maintains also own requirements 
derives requirements, may be willing to share it, but I guess the responsibility will be very hard to transfer to our Linux kernel or maintainer community to write down requirements. Nobody is, I guess, willing to <laughs> do all this overhead and put it maybe in a formal requirements yes, yes. to. Uh, I would answer is somebody, somebody in the ecosystem is willing to do it. Like I have a test team, I have, I'm already doing the requirements capture, I'm already doing the testing. I'm willing to open it and make it public and do uh, validation for a public repository, right? So it's mainly, uh, it comes down okay. to collaboration. It, needs, yeah. it cannot be a general so, thing. So one of the things that just got open sourced is a tool from Red Hat called Basil, where we can link the requirements, the code to the tests. And cool. so if you guys could start help populating that out, we could crowd, start to crowdsource that in areas where people care about things. And maybe that will be a starting point for pulling this all together into something useful for all of us. Because if you've got pieces and other people have pieces, I completely agree. We need to start collaborating this stuff to pull it together and so it's usable. Um, so do we have actually a taxonomy or a dictionary of existing systems? So, I mean, you outlined earlier the difference between the Linux way and the auto way, and you sort of kind of summarized your experience with um, how some of these designs are made in the automotive system of the world, but do we have an actual sort of dictionary of here are 10 cars and here's how those 10 cars solve the problem? Because I guess that would, I mean, give practical or, you know, empirical data of how these different things have been solved. And somebody coming from the exterior that doesn't know that field and doesn't have a sense of like, you know, reference points of stuff can at least look at that and say, oh, okay, well, maybe I have some experience that's related to that from other fields and then apply it to the automotive business. So is there such a sort of compendium of systems that existed? Not, like, that's where I want, like I was coming to, like, where should I, like if I have something like that, where should I come and discuss this? Like discuss this in a form or should I discuss this in kernel? Yeah, but honestly, I mean, if, if you were just to build a database of that, like here, are, here's a website or one page we have. Okay, and here's like 10 examples of actual real products in the market and what, what they struggled with and what they ended up with. And, and just having that as something you can point people to, maybe that would be sort of something interesting to, again, let give me, some reference points to people that are trying to solve the problem with you. Let me work on that. I think we, like, as I said, power management is new to the entire industry. Maybe we may not have the running use cases, but mainly in the networking domain and the bootloader domains and these, um, the early KPIs that I mentioned. So a lot of our learnings can be shared and I can come up with that dictionary kind of thing, which can clearly articulate how we have solved and what we can learn from other services, other domains of Linux. Yeah, because I guess what I'm trying to say is, is if you keep it at the level where there's no sort of data about these things, then only the people who are in the field will be able to participate in the discussion. Whereas if you actually have a database of systems and problems that have been solved, then somebody that's, from, I don't know, from the server world or whatever can come back and say, well, we had this problem and had this how we solved it. Uh, regarding kind of a database, I guess it's nothing existing so far, but when you create a system on Linux, you need to comply with the licenses along with it, right? So I think it's often not that easily to be found, but if you start, start searching, typically you find uh, a system composition, I would say, in the OEM's repositories or web pages. So I know that uh, Denso, Bosch, Toyota, Mercedes, they have certain web pages where you can download the created source paths. So I guess it's, there is no real database in this, but at least the sources are out there. And typically if you figure, get an indication of where things are, if you have a car, for example, you should be able to find the license information, right? If you see there is a license information somewhere because they're obliged to, do, to have a point of contact, and I guess it should be possible to also figure out where all these kinds are in use and how the things are configured. Um, getting, getting back to your point about bootloaders, um, is uh, would there be any, I mean, I know there's a lot of work going into, uh, I think Microsoft calls it secured core or something like that, where they do a lot of attestation and, and um, uh, secure really around that related to UEFI and stuff. Would any of that be leverageable? Um, I mean, I, I know a lot of things use U-Boat today, but I mean, there are some x86 I think the automotive most solutions thing as well. I see what uh, Philip has mentioned about one of the Rust-based uh, bootloaders. I think that might come very closer. UEFI didn't really help us because these bootloaders have to be very nimble and solve a different kind of problems, like as I was saying on the sensors, on the cameras, and things like this. So, uh, 
yeah, uh, again, all these issues are solved, but they are not in a tweaked way, which we need to collaborate. Maybe with. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, what I was saying is like all these issues are solved, you no, know, but then we need to make it public and start uh, make it broader and uh, standardized way of things. So UEFI didn't help much uh, in basically in these kind of domains that I have seen. I, I personally have worked on UEFI on ARM V8 also on the Octo side of things, but I didn't see this as an important item to consider. Okay. So um, regarding the uh, proposal to sort of use the repositories that are public, I think that's great. Uh, but I think what Kasim was saying also earlier is that a lot of the other pieces are like proprietary, like talking to MCU, doing whatever. So uh, yes, I think that uh, using the reference uh, things, uh, whatever is published is great, but it's a starting point. But there's also like a higher level design that may not be reflected in the sources per se. we are done with the time so we will thank you very much thanks for showing this uh, interest for this topic hope it was making your interest feel thank you thanks a lot